Right, greetings all. Hope this finds you well as always. It's now time for the latest update from the machine shop, where we're up to and what we're on with. The first thing is a very quick bit and piece that I uh, picked up on the way into work this morning. That's this length of steel tube. This is to make us up some uh, cores for casting rod brasses, of which we're doing quite a lot of. And so the problem is our old cores have got very badly pitted on the outside. You'll have seen in my recent videos, there's been one or two stuck ones that I've had to machine out. And so this piece of tube has been bought so we can make up a couple of new cores. The core is simply a mould that goes into the middle of the bush. So we'll cut a section of this. And then the other thing we're gonna make is I'm gonna make a steel plate that will fit on exactly the same, well, slightly smaller outside diameter than the pipe, but it will have um, a register machined on the inside of it that will fit into the bore of the pipe nice and snug. And so the idea is when the core, when the time comes to press the core out, you've got that press plate to go on top of it so you know you're pressing directly onto the core, you're not pressing onto the white metal or whatever. And so hopefully it'll make getting them out slightly easier. So that'll be cut up into lengths. We'll then, there's currently, I'm leaving it with Adrian Dennis to decide, but I think we might end up putting a slight taper onto it as well. It's not much, it's only a couple of degrees. It's just enough so that when the core starts to move, it releases. So anyway, that's the first job that's coming up. Next jobs, um, we saw this uh, injector steam valve off 76079 last week. Well, that has been, uh, the seat in it has been recut. So that's all ready to go, all ready to reassemble and be refitted onto the engine at some point. Uh, I ended up changing the setup. I had it um, set in the four jaw chuck. Well, I ended up changing it because I wasn't happy with how it was dialing in. It wasn't aligning very well. I actually ended up sitting it onto an angle plate held on these three bosses here with a packer under each one to hold it absolutely level and it actually worked far better. So that's been filed away for future reference. So, yep, that's done. Um, another job, Brian's back in this week and he's busily making yet more gauge frame fittings. The reason he's doing these is they're LMS ones, but these are, have a slightly bigger hexagon head on them. My idea, when well, standing behind the, lo the logic behind that, was that the LMS is here the crews with the standard gauge frame spanner. One end, the large open end, does the nuts on the gauge glass itself. The second did the bungs on the gauge frame that the crew might need to release if they need to change the glass. Now, my understanding is, because we have some that are a slightly smaller hexagon, was that there was the idea that there were bungs on those gauge frames they didn't want the crews to remove. And so they made those a small hexagon so the spanner wouldn't fit. And then the bungs that might need to be removed are made to fit the hexagon on the spanner. As you can see, Brian's done a smashing job of that. It's a lovely fit in there. So he's got a couple of those to rattle out. He's another one in the lathe he's setting up to thread tomorrow. So that's his job for tomorrow. And he'll get that done and it'll be a smashing job as always. So that's that's where he's up to at the moment. And then the major job I'm on with is new rod brasses. Uh, just avoiding the heat. Yeah, it's definitely winter. Um, new rod brasses for 76079. Now, the problem, a couple of weeks ago, I showed you the old brasses, which have been pressed out of the rods. And I said, some of them will go again. Some of them will re-metal. Uh, apologies for me leaving my back. Oh, we don't need to see that now, do we? Um... Yeah, anyway, we don't see my empty bait box. Um, it's very good what was in it. Anyway, some of them, as I said, will go again. Some of them, when pressed out of the rods, they were found to be too loose to fit in the rod. Now, this is basically due to, over time, the bush distorts, it works in the rod, it works loose, and so they will replace them. Now, this is one of the ones that's been replaced. If we look at the stamping, it's upside down, I'm afraid, but you'll see seven, six, seven, nine, less intermediate. So... That we know this bush needs removing, needs replacing. It fell out of the rod with barely a ton of force on the ram. It should be somewhere in the region of eight to ten tons, and it needs replacing. So how do we go about replacing something like this? Well, we start with a rough casting like this. I've measured up that bush. I've sent um, dimensions off to our foundry. Those dimensions have a casting allowance added onto them. As you can see, the bush is actually considerably taller than, the casting is taller than its original. That's basically because the foundry cannot guarantee that this face will be absolutely flat. And so they need to put a casting allowance on it so that when I machine away at it, they, um, this will clean up to thickness. 
So um, there's also they've also put a bit of extra length on the body. When I order these, I specify the inside diameter as actually bang on whatever the old bush was. And I'll come to why in a minute. There is a very good reason for that. Hint, the clothes in the white metal. So I'll order that to pretty much that. I'll put a quarter of an inch on the outside diameter, quarter of an inch on the thickness of the flange. The foundry then usually put a, well, I specify quarter of an inch on the body. It often ends up slightly longer. I don't, I'm not quite sure why that is, whether they want to make sellers a bit more bronze or whether it's that that's their stock pattern, I don't know. But I do, one thing I have found is if they make them with a longer body here, we have far less problems with uh, air bubbles in them. So whether it's part of that, I don't know. One of these fine days, I must get up to lanes and actually see them casting some of these things because I've got a lot of questions I'd like to ask them. Anyway, that's for the future. So we start with the raw casting like that, okay? We then start machining said raw casting. And we end up with something that's, well, this is about halfway through being machined. And as you can see, there's some features on it which it's all look reasonable. And then some you'll think, how in heaven's name is that a bearing surface? It isn't. So what I've done is, first of all, I have faced off the end to clean it up. This also gives me a datum surface for all the later calculating the length of the bush. I have also taken the outside diameter of the top hat here and turned this to finish size, okay? So that is on finish size, and that's my datum surface. This flange, as is at the moment, is about a um, quarter of an inch over thickness. But if you look at that cast face there, you will see that it's pretty irregular. So it's gonna take probably, it's probably gonna take at least eighth of an inch to clean that up. And this outside diameter here is currently as cast. So I'll, now, but the inside, I've done, what I've done is first of all, I've bored it out. Now, a minute ago, I said that when I order these castings, I specify them so the internal diameter of the casting is exactly the same as the old bush. The reason is that this bush has to have a layer of white metal added in. Now, you're aiming for an eighth of an inch thickness of white metal. So an eighth of an inch on that side, an eighth of an inch on this side. So this diameter here is going to end up as a quarter of an inch bigger than whatever the machine size of the old bush was, okay? Because it's going, to put, it's going to put white metal in it. So I've bought that out, quarter of an inch of a size. I've then made this mess of it. No, this is not what happens when you use a blunt boring bar. This is entirely deliberate. What this is, is this is a series of grooves at 100 thousandths of an inch spacing, uh, which have been cut with a threading tool, as can be seen with that. Now these grooves are there to give the white metal something to key to. So when, the, when that's tinned and the white metal's cast in, these grooves will act as a mechanical lock between the bush and the white metal, ensuring the white metal can't work loose. Why don't we simply cut a screw thread, I hear you say? Well, the thing is, if that was a screw thread, if that was a continuous single groove, if that white metal was to grab on the crank pin for some reason, it would just very simply just wind its way out of the bush, like pulling a cork out of a bottle. Whereas it's a series of each groove of those grooves is separate, it's a series of separate grooves, then if that white metal spins in the bush, it's still not coming out of there. No, it's not going to spin. That is very unlikely. I have I have heard of it happening. I've never seen it, but I have heard of it. So those grooves are there basically to give a key for the white metal to go on to. Okay, so what am I going to do next? Well, what I'm going to do next is flip it around in the chuck, grip it on this machine diameter here, use this as my datum face butted up against the chuck, and I'm going to turn this to a size, and I'm also going to finish the bush to the right length. Now, this is where it gets quite, so you just got to do a bit more work, because that bush, when we pour white metal into it, the bush will distort slightly. In the process of heating it up and pouring in the white metal, then that bush will change shape slightly as the stresses in the metal are released. Now, the thing is, if I've turned that to finish size, I then heat it and cool it and it changes shape, it probably ain't going to fit in the rod. So what I'm going to do here is that surface there, that diameter, is going to be turned to an eighth of an inch of a size, and I'm also going to put an eighth of an inch spare on the length. I will split it between the end here and between the thickness of this flange, okay? So that flange will be a sixteenth fatter than it should be, and from the top of the flange to the end of the bush will be a sixteenth of an inch further than it should be, okay? And that just gives me, so if it distorts when the white metal is done, it um, gives me enough meat to clean it up and get it to finish size, okay? So, what do they look like when they're white metalled? Well, we don't quite have one we did here, because this is actually an old bush which is going to go again. 
But the next stage is that we cast the white metal into them. This, incidentally, this, this is where the core that I mentioned earlier, coming from that piece of steel pipe, works. Because the core goes into the inside here to act as a mould, so you're not wasting white metal. As you can see from the state of where the bush has been pressed out, you can see why our core's getting pitted is becoming an issue because where it pits, it's a mechanical key, just like your grooves in the bush, and it takes that much more force to press it out. Despite the fact, to be fair to the lads, they are lathering the cores with uh, graphite anti-seize um, compound when they um, put them in. So that bush has had the white metal cast in, and then the final job will be to take that bush and make it look more like this. So we will bore the inside to a finished size, the outside, now again, this is an old bush which is going again. We saw this a couple of weeks ago. But if I had a new bush, well, the first thing that would have is I would have to skim the bush faces all to length, skim the excess eighth of an inch off that diameter to set it to size. Well, the outside of the top hat's doing doesn't really matter because that's not actually sitting in anything. But this here does need to be accurately turned to size because it's that that is pressed into the hole in the rod and it's that which is basically what the diameter of that is what holds the bush in the rod. And then the last thing I would have to do would be mill in a keyway, which we can see here. I don't quite understand these keyways because people try and tell me they are stop the bush rotating. It's been pressed in with a force of 10 tons. I mean, loads of names are it going to rotate? I actually think the more they perform more of a location role. It's very simply to align the bush so that with this oil hole, with this hole here, where an oil pad will eventually go, aligns directly under the oil box. And so it's just, just to basically make it all idiot proof. And then the last thing I will do is stamp up the bush with an identity. What it, it the local number, what size it is, which it, side it is, which in this case we see is the right, and what it is. Is it leading, trailing, or intermediate? Well, we can see that's RI, which stands for right intermediate. And of course, the locomotive 76079. So that's purely so that we can identify the bush when in later life and also when that bush if that bush is ever remetalled you, you can it's all very well writing on it what it is but pen and paint that burns off in the remetalling process stamping remains so that's why we stamp them so anyway folks there we go a quick um, rundown on rob brasses and their manufacture as i said that's the major job we're on with at the moment because once we get them done they can be pressed back into 76079's rods and the rods can go back onto her. So, well, the large rods can go back onto her. We've then got another two lumps of bronze down here, which are currently sat on the floor over here. You'll see those two smaller lumps and there's also that big billet in front of it. The big billet is to become two new little ambushes. Sorry, not, yes, they are little ambushes. The little ambushes we're renewing with that. And then the other two billets are to become new bushes in the combination levers. So there you go. That's just to show quite how much material goes into just repairing just one locomotive over a winter. So anyway, folks, I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it educational, informative. Now take care and I'll see you around.